Ooh, oh, well. Oh, missed yeah. point. Missed we point. We reset oh, the well. so One, two, Wait, wait, wait. Uh, reset. and drums. Mm. It was like boom 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 An entire song is always too much. Yeah. So. We're rolling? All right, cool. Hi guys. Hey Tanoshi. Hey Tanoshi. Hey, Tanoshi. hey. How are you? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of My Favorite Alpha. We have our first return guest. Please welcome back Cameron and welcome the entire Ginger Root for the first time. Right, that's that's probably the mm-hmm. right way to put it. The rest of the root. The, the rest of the, the rest of the root. That's, that's yeah, last time it was just the ginger, root. and now it's the root. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. Well, my name's Cameron. I make music under the name Ginger Root, and today 
I also brought the other two members, and uh, I'll pass it to you. Uh, my name's Dylan. I, I play bass for Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dylan. My name's Matt. Uh, Matt Carney. I play drums with Ginger Root. I feel like for people that see our channel, like you don't need any introduction. If you're s discovering Ginger Root on our channel for the first time, welcome. If you want like, you know, background on who Ginger Root is, check out the last episode. But if you want to know what they've been up to since, when was that? February that 2022? That was actually quite, quite a while ago. It's been over, it's a, year and a, half. Over a year now. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. since then, you, you've released an EP? Yes, yes. Uh, you've toured Japan? Yes, yes. You hit up Fuji Rock? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you performed with Eric Andre? Mm. Almost. 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 We were so close. He canceled. Thanks, SAG. What? Because yeah. of the strike. Oh, because the strike. strike. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, yeah. instead, we could say we have, we played for Adult Swim. There you go. Yeah, yeah. there you go. So there you go. Flipping um, it. Flipping it. Yeah. Anything Anything else like that you want people to know that you've been up to since um, a year and a half ago? Well, Ginger released uh, a new EP that was called Nisei Mon over the summer. We went on our first, I think, our first legitimate like headline tour, yeah. um, which was a lot of fun, blew all our expectations, learned a lot. Um, and then we took like two weeks off for Christmas, and then we came to Japan in January, played our first tour, sold out Osaka, Nagoya, two nights in Tokyo. Um, and then we played Korea as well. They went home. I stayed here, I did a show on J-Wave, um, I got interviewed for like Brutus and things, I got to meet the Za Hosono-san, um, and then I met them back in Hong Kong and we did our first Asia tour. So we did Hong Kong, Thailand, Taiwan, Singapore, and then uh, they left, and then I flew back here, <laughs> and then I, I did a, a music video for uh, two groups out here. Um, I did a song with another artist, and then I went home. Um, and then it's been a kind of a little bit of preparation for coming back here for Fuji Rock and also You know, what's next on the docket for us is kind of what we're thinking about now. That's what we have been up to cool I feel like we kind of glossed over the the big thing especially considering this channel you met Hosono. Yes <laughs> I, I think I did. I don't really remember. But Was yes. he real? I hope so. Uh, that was a weird dream you have uh, anything that you haven't really mentioned about that 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 um, is like a I mean I don't know it's been a few months now too so you probably got a little bit more like yeah I mean it all kind of happened basically I, it's funny I made a TikTok about this um, but basically what happened was that Hama um, was uh, was like hey Hosono wants to bring you on the show but then unfortunately Takahashi died so then they had to postpone it for you know indefinite future um, and then as I was coming back from uh, our Asia tour. He hit me up and he was like, hey, when do you leave? And I was like, I leave this date. And he's like, hey, like like two days before, do you want to go on his show? Like he has an opening. And I was like, absolutely, I'll do anything to be there. I got off the train and I got driven to his studio. It's in a basement. And there he was sitting in a bunch of cigarette smoke, just uh, just chilling on his, on his couch um, with two 57s, you know, or whatever. Uh, no, no fancy gear and just chatted about music, chatted about comedy, chat, chatted about bass playing with all three of us, which was really fun. Um, and that was like the ultimate language test for me. Like people take the JLTP exam or whatever f to, to test their knowledge, but like talking to Hosono was like my version of that, like midterm exam. So right. um, yeah, it was fun. And uh, I was like, oh, we're playing Fuji Rock. And he's like, congratulations. I was like, I didn't invite you, but I know you probably physically can't go. And he's like, I am way too old for that. But thank you for the <laughs> invitation. Um, and it was it was really cool, and uh, wouldn't trade the experience for for the world. Awesome. So you guys today performed "Ryugu Jo no Koibito" by Koshi Miharu. Yes. Why did you choose this song? We were talking about originally. We discussed like, oh, if we should just do. For those who don't know, we did a YMO medley on our Japan tour, and we also did it at Fuji Rock, and we were thinking about. Possibly just doing that, but since Alpha has such a diverse catalog, and and we we are friends f fans of the label, and we also um, you know listen to a lot of the 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 deeper cuts on the label, we were like it'd be cool to do something kind of more off the beaten path. And yes, this album is produced by Hosono, but um, I think it was cool because this was kind of the deepest one that I think we all knew. 
Um, and I mean, the whole album's great, and I don't know what you guys think about you know, how we try to figure out the song and arranging it and all that. I think it was a fun challenge for us to like tackle something with that much production, because for three of us, and especially only one person playing keyboards, like mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was definitely a challenge, but I, I think that's where we find a lot of fun in playing together is like, like how can we piece something together? Even like when we were doing like the YMO stuff, but like this is definitely, a was a little bit more challenging, but uh, we're pretty proud of how it came out. Mm -hmm. I was pretty doubtful at first. So like, <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> were like, you're like, Dylan was like, we should just try it. And I, I thought, okay, like let's, we're gonna go to rehearsal and sit down and we're we, just gonna play it. We and played then, it the first time and we're like, Oh, we're like we, we had some I backups. Kind of works. We had a few backups. Yeah, we had, we we few had some backups. backups. Yeah, we're like, if this sounds really bad, we'll just. <laughs> yeah. What was the deadline for? Like, all right, we're moving to the backup. Maybe like second rehearsal. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. the first rehearsal was like, no, no, like no, uh, no judgment. Just play it. <laughs> but and then the second was like, do your homework, and yeah. the homework. If you got an A, if you got a B on your homework, then, you know. You but could, but generally, I feel like every time we cover a song, we have, like, very, very low expectations. And then the first time we play it, we're like, oh, it's <laughs> not bad. True. It's not bad. Okay. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what kind of is the process for, like, do you arrange that? Or is it, like, a, you guys all kind of write your own, arrange your own parts? Or It depends sometimes. I know Matt for... Matt just has to listen to the song. Honestly, <laughs> Matt... <laughs> he he sometimes, he's so he's easy, guys. Sometimes we come into the studio, and we all sit on the couch, and we catch up or whatever. And, like, we'll, me and Dylan will be setting up, and then I hear him go like this. And I know he's not on the phone. He's listening to the song. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just like... I'm like... Okay, I got you're it. like... Okay. <laughs> like, three, four. Um... <laughs> But this one in particular, I think we all kind of just learned like the part. So you learned bass and yeah. I learned keys and that learned drums. If you want to call it the bass. Yeah. Yeah. There's, 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 really, yeah, there's really no bass part in the song. And then we kind of just played it. And then I think we were like, okay, what's missing? Or what can change? Or what can we add or get rid of? And after that first rehearsal. We went right? through maybe like. We were playing the verse like twenty different ways. That's you know, true. Like we did yeah. go through a lot of trial and error where we're like, okay, this to get it. There's a lot of nuances to the song. A lot of just like yeah. drumming wise, there's a lot of like percussive like sort of nuances to it. So we tried first probably more like a ginger rooty version of it, and then I think by the end we we're all like more trying to emulate what the recording sounded like. Yeah, and then, I mean it's fun too for like us, me and Cameron, to be able to like pick and choose like what important parts like melodically that like we can kind of fit into the song because like I'm playing lead synth lines during the chorus of the song on the bass. So it's like uh, we get to kind of have fun with it and mm -hmm. pick it apart. Yeah. Dylan I think just shreds. Dylan does just shred. <laughs> and then we just tame his shredding a little yeah. bit on top. But yeah, I think as a trio, like there's definitely some like leeway because we only have six hands. And Matt has, you know, four appendages or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it was it was a cool challenge. I'm I'm proud of how how we got or where we got it to sound like too. But yeah, the song has a lot of nuance, and it was very interesting to figure out how to uh, communicate that with what we are able to do. Um, as so mu much as like Matt, can you hit the hi hat like a little softer, or yeah. like don't hit the ride after beat four, and then we like took that break out, then we put it back in, then we took it out, then we put it back in. <laughs> so yeah, it, it took a while and I'm glad uh, that it got to what we did today. Awesome. Anything that like you like discovered about the song through that process that like you found like unique or want to like mm. speak on? There's no dynamics. Remember we were trying to fit dynamics in because yeah. going into certain sections we were trying to like break or like like fill, do this incredible fill in, but then we realized that the beauty of the song, I think that we bonded over, was that it's just da, 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 like yeah. the whole time, and it doesn't get boring somehow. Yeah I, yeah, I found it interesting that I feel like I learned how to not overplay because the only fill in the song is da 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 da. da. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's the only fill. Right, and so for like the sake of. Dynamics, I think I added a few more, but I, I think I really learned how to be more reserved on the drums and just... Become a machine. Become a machine <laughs> that just kind of locks it in. Yeah. What do you know about Miharu Koshi? Koshi. Miharu Koshi? Big fan of fish. Big, 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 fish. big, big fan of fish? <laughs> yeah, big fan of fish. I can't confirm that. <laughs> uh, wears a sharp suit. Um, yeah. 
No, I, I remember, I found out about this album first from her, like of her work. And then I remember just like, you know, searching Discog or searching YouTube. And there was um, an artist with the same name with a completely different aesthetic, like in 1979 or something like that. And it's a completely different, like very standard, like Kayo Kyoku album. And so uh, turns out that I, that I realized that it's the same artist. And I guess what happened was um, she was like a professional piano player. Um, and she was, you know, she played a couple times on like Best of Ten and Yono Hit Studio and stuff like that. Um, and then she kind of got thrown into like, okay, I could become an idol. And she didn't want to do that. She actually wanted to reverse that. So she changed her image, uh, collaborated with Hosono and made a couple records with him um, and totally flipped her image um, to, to not uh, kind of be like a corporate pop star. She wanted to do her own thing. And so she found a home on Yen Records and, and Alpha Records and everything. Um, but I mean, her earlier stuff is also great. It's just completely different, which is really cool. Um, and then I think I told you this, but you know, the, uh, good morning, Mr. Mr. Echo song, mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. clip or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's her playing oh, the accordion. Okay, okay. Yeah. And okay. I was like, man, she's really also really good at accordion too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, that's what I know about her. Yeah. He pulled up this record while we were waiting in the studio and I was like, have you heard this record? I was like, no. And then I, on the way home, like listen to the whole album and it's been it's my, such it's a good record. in rotation constantly, especially the song that we covered, which was why I was so excited to do it. Awesome. Yeah. Did you do research or is that just stuff that you've like known? That was just stuff like I think it organically happened that way where I found the album and then I was like I was like, okay, how much is it on Discogs? That, that's what I did basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I looked at it and I went to her artist profile and I was like, is this the same artist? Because it's a completely different aesthetic. You know, classic like white suit. There's like there's an album of her like white suit. It's called like on the street, and she's like it's like a flash photo of her like on the street or whatever. And I was like, right. And I listened to that record, and then I was like, this can't be the same person. I sent Dylan that link, and Dylan was like, did she have like a voice transplant? Because it's, <laughs> it's completely different, right? Um, but it makes sense because when she plays, there's a couple TV clips that she plays with like um, Takahashi and Hosono, mm-hmm. and um, she's like playing keyboards, and that clip. That uh, are uh, like Good Morning Mr. Echo or that song or whatever. She's also playing a, like a mean accordion too. So then that me, I was like, for me, I was like, that's got to be the same person with the same piano chops and everything. So um, yeah, it was kind of all just because I went in a deep rabbit hole. Awesome. Yeah. She was so she was born into a very musical family. Oh, okay. Her father was a bassoonist. Wow. Uh, and her mother. Uh, was a vocalist. Her, her father was a bassoonist for the Yomiuri Nippon Symphony Orchestra, like wow. professional bassoonist. Wow. So she grew up in like a classical music household. Mm. She started playing piano at age three, uh, started composing age eight, uh, I think. Three years old. That makes yeah, sense. she was forced into piano lessons. And she talks about how like she didn't practice because the teacher was scary. Uh, I think, you know, classic. What, what piano teacher's not scary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then she also talks about how she discovered chanson on the radio when she was in elementary school, and she fell in love with it. And she'd buy, like, chanson uh, sheet music and, like, practice it on the piano. Uh, and she said she didn't really know why she was into it when she was younger, but as she grew older, she discovered that she really likes, like, the swing feel. Oh. And she likes just aesthetically how French lyrics sound. Oh. So she still sings a lot in French today, too, because oh. she's, like, it has a lot of... Well, sounds that you don't have in Japanese. Yeah, her aesthetic is very French, especially her later work and, and everything, right. which now makes sense. Right. Uh, and then kind of like with what you pointed out, like she was kind of pigeonholed into being an idol, yeah. which has a lot to do with uh, the fact that TV was like the main promotion space for music at the time. So basically, if you were like a woman and you sang, they were like, oh, cool, you're an idol. Right. And there was no way to really do anything other than that really at the time. Right. Um, and so she definitely started to feel disillusioned by that and eventually she leaves her production company around the time when she's starting to listen a lot more like new wave and techno pop. She talks about she collected a bunch of records around the time. She collected stuff by Telex, Kraftwerk, Devo, Talking Heads, XTC. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) And so this is like, I guess in the early 80s Mm -hmm. and she buys a synthesizer and she buys a, a... drum machine and she starts making demos uh, and then she says that her the old label were like yeah this is never going to be commercial enough and so she wasn't she was feeling a little down uh, and then in like 83 
she gets invited to play piano at a session for uh, Endo Kenji. Kenji Endo, oh. uh, for the record Omurice, oh. which was produced by Hosono. That makes sense now. She brings her demos, oh, and wow. Hosono takes a listen, and he's like, this is pretty interesting. And it's like the first time that she had like wow. a not immediately negative Mm -hmm. reaction to it and huh. so she's immediately like oh man this guy's so nice <laughs> uh, and then he, he invited her to Yen and because he had just set up Yen right and produced the record and she talks about how he was like well, let's just record it exactly the way you have it in the demo wow um, so that becomes 2-2 mm -hmm. uh, and then they do parallelism mm -hmm. as well yeah and then that's kind of the end of the road for Yen Wow. But she does go on to join Hosono's, like, the label that he makes next. She continues making records with Hosono. She's, like, a part of, a big part of FOE. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and she continues to be active to this day. She released her most recent record. Oh, I didn't um, know that. Yeah, she released her most recent record in 2021 called Voyage Secret. Wow. And she's actually been doing this series of concerts called Madam Crooner. Hmm. Uh, yeah, <laughs> she released a record called Madam Crooner 10 years ago. Oh. Uh, and then since then, every year, she's been doing a concert series, uh, and it's a series where she performs jazz and chanson from the 30s and 40s. Oh, wow. Mm. So it's like a vintage performance. Very cool. Uh, and she did the 10th anniversary performance of that in May of this year. Wow. So she's still, you know, doing it. That's incredible. Yes, it is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> a long career. Yeah. Very still going. Still mm. going. Yeah. Um, but yeah, also, like you guys pointed out, like, you know, this is a big, it's a drastic change in yeah. her sound. Yeah. Uh, I think you can hear some of the chanson influence in like her second or third record that she does at RCA. Yeah. But, you know, with this, it's very techno forward and like French pop. Yeah. Uh, and she talks about how doing this record gave her the freedom basically for the rest of her career to now just do what she wanted. Um, because essentially because Hasano was like, I hear you, I see you, let's do this. Yeah. And then they did it. That's incredible. Yeah. Talking about this record then, like, uh, one of the cool things she, uh, with her, like, collecting telex and et cetera, she, she covers telex. Oh, The wow. first track is a telex cover. Wow. And they actually recorded it for her. Oh, wow. And she actually opened for them in Europe the following year. Wow. As a result of that. Um, the L'Amour Toujours. Uh -huh. da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's like a, that's a, a, a talic song. Wow. Ooh. Um, and she also, speaking of her chanson influence, she covers uh, a song by Barbara in that oh. one. Oh, Baba. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She covers a song by Baba. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What <laughs> Barbara. <laughs> Barbara. But awesome. I, I also find it really interesting that, like, you know, for the most part, she writes and composes and yeah. writes the lyrics for, like, all the songs, except for a cover of a chanson song and a cover of a telex song, That's which crazy. I feel like are, they're, they're very on point to her influences and her personality. Yeah, absolutely. So I really appreciate that, personally. Wow. You're chilled out now. We've been talking for a few minutes. Like, how are you guys feeling about, like, the actual like performance here, the experience of performing that here at Onkyo House. Because, oh yeah, I didn't mention, we're at Onkyo House, hmm. which is another legend. Oh, it's where we always do it here recently, hmm. but it's a legendary Japanese uh, uh, studio that's been here for almost 50 years. All the legends have recorded here, wow. now including Ginger Root. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, how, how was the experience itself of performing it here? I mean, to be in a studio like this is a pretty rare experience for an indie band. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> there's a big upgrade from where we rehearsed. Yeah, I'll just yeah, say that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, as soon as we walked in, I was like, "Oh, look at these microphones." <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, it's it's a really cool experience, and like to hear that like so many legendary musicians have played here, or recorded, and like, I mean, I I feel very lucky to be here and experience this. Could you give us more information about this place? Other, I mean, I know you, you said a bunch of people have put, like, recorded here, but, like... I, I mean, I know that Yuming's recorded a lot of things here. I know that Sakamoto's recorded here. You mentioned Teiko Unuki recorded oh, here. She's recorded here all the time. Oh, okay. Yeah. To be fair, like, 
this place has been here for so long and it's, you know, this kind of studio, like pretty much anybody that's anybody mm. throughout the history of Japanese music. That's crazy. And like I was saying, there's like a bunch of signed Yuming records that she recorded here downstairs. Yeah. Um, and there's a Sakamoto one too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this it's a beautiful place. And that sounds amazing in here. I mean, just sitting in the control room, listening to like the playback of us playing, it was like, it sounds this so is cool. Pristine. This is cool. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Where were you guys rehearsing? We rehearse in my studio, um, which is studio. Yeah, it's, it's a studio, studio. in the it's middle. It's, it's in the middle of a business complex next to a Costco. So, mm -hmm. if that tells you anything, yeah. No, for some reason, yeah. I was like, "Did you guys practice here? Like, did you guys go to like a studio Noah we or did, something?" Well, no, actually, oh, we, we actually we did, did go yeah. to a studio Noah. Okay, uh, we did. We did. <laughs> we did. And uh, yeah, they don't have anything like that in LA, so it was it was great. Just yeah. walking in, nice. plugging in, and playing, which was really cool. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, like, to be in a place like this, you know, it's, like what Dylan said, it's like, it's very rare for really any band of, like, that's up and coming to be in a space like this. I mean, mainly what comes down to, like, money, you know, really a lot of bands don't have a lot of funds. But, you know, it, it, it's a big honor to, that this place also, you know, has such a rich history, and it's kind of cool that we've at least got to be a small blip in this building's history, you know, like however long this place is going to be here, you know, from the established date to whenever it closes, you know, whenever that may be or whatever. It's really cool to know that, you know, there are some people's footsteps here that, you know, we have looked up to um, and also that aren't, you know, here anymore, which is really cool. So I think maybe we were able to uh, get the song in the second take because I think there was some people, you know, giving us the thumbs of approval or thumbs up of approval, <laughs> like somewhere up in the rafters. So that was, uh, it's, it's, it's cool. It's cool. Amazing. Mm -hmm. You guys ready for a quiz? Oh God. Okay. Quiz time. Quiz yes. time. And yes. And I got this thing. I showed you guys how it works earlier. <laughs> um, um, and like I said earlier, like, if you, uh, whoever wins the quiz can keep this. Do you want to right. put it on my knee? It's your prize. You don't like it. You don't like it. <laughs> you don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. All right. I was, you know. It's my fast hand. <laughs> <laughs> Is your Smash Bro hand? Yeah. yeah. No, it's the A button. All right. You guys ready? <laughs> yeah. What are the two records she released with Yen? Is it Tutu and pa da da ba da da it's cool. these two. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So one point to Cameron. I'm just gonna skip her birthday because I know no now one, that none no of you guys know. Wait, can we August? Can we just can we, yeah, can we, can we just do guess? Guess? All right, okay. So whoever gets closest. <laughs> no, no, it's whoever gets closest. So you all have to answer for this one. Oh, okay. October eighth. Uh, August twenty second. May fourth. January third, which I think puts October eighth. Oh closest. yeah! All right. One point to Dylan. One point to Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what are the two artists slash songs that she covers on those two records? There's uh, Barbara and um, Tech. I know it. Oh my God! Why am I blanking? Do you want to get half a point? Tech half point? Technics. I what was right. it? Uh, okay, I got one. Do I get half a point? Oh, it's a two point question. So okay. So. Okay. So, oh no, you already know. I forgot. Oh, Telex. Yeah, there you go. I was like, two, one, one. Okay. Like... All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what year was Parallelism released? 1985? Ooh, four. Four. Oh. I knew. I was like, oh, I was going to do four. But I feel like, I feel like 1984 <laughs> is too much of a famous year to just say 1984. Right, right. Anyway, all right. Also, I just realized, I probably should have given a second opportunity for someone to answer that, huh? Ooh. Oh, well. oh, oh, yeah. Point, missed we point. Reset oh, the well. so One, two, wait, wait, wait. Reset. <laughs> 1985. <laughs> <laughs> all right, four. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go. <laughs> The point goes. Down. <laughs> one, one, no, no. three, one. All, All right. right. Okay. All right. When did Koshi first meet Hosono? Wait. Are you talking about a date or like a session? Because she came to that session um, for Omoraisu. And um, Hosono, she played a demo for Hosono, and Hosono was like the first one that wasn't an absolute meanie. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. It was 1983, but that's part of, like, I, it was, oh, like, an okay. additional at so okay. okay. the full point. So, what, one, three, two? One, three, two? Yeah. What is Yen Records? Who got it? Um, oh, okay. um, um, it's a sister label of Yen, started by Hosono. What is yeah. Yen? I'm sorry, of Alpha. Sorry, of Alpha. Yen, Yen is part of Alpha. <laughs> <laughs> Started by Hosono yeah. and was it Takahashi? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what? One three three. Yes. Come on, dude. Come on, I gotta... <laughs> <laughs> how about how about you put? You get two buttons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get two buttons. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mihari Koshi is featured on two other Yen records, excluding the graduation compilation. What are they? The name of the records. <laughs> You're talking about the name the, of the records. Uh, the name of the records, but you can describe the records. I'll take descriptions of the records. I don't know if it's Yen, but it's 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 red, white, and blue, and I think Mr. Echo's on it. I don't think it, that's part of Yen. I think Yen was over by then, so I'm wrong. I just said I just said <laughs> a random fact. <laughs> red, white, and blue. Deduct? Yeah, it's it's red, white, and blue. Hosono is like test pattern. Hosono is like standing like this in the picture. <laughs> All right, never mind. Never mind. That's, never mind. That's, that's wrong. Okay, all right. we're all wrong. I think we're all wrong. We're all wrong. The answers were We Wish You a Merry Christmas, which is a Christmas compilation that you ended in 83. Oh, okay, okay. well. And Apogee oh. and Perigee. And Happy Birthday, another compilation by Alpha <laughs> with birthday songs. <laughs> birthday uh, all right, ready? How are Koshimi Haru and Hosono credited for performed and arranged, the performed and arranged by credit on parallelism? Um, Miharo is wrote all the songs and Hosono produced and played, performed and played. But she so, she composed. 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 So, okay. well, so there the the the. Uh, Can I be honest? I looked at the back of the record. <laughs> when right Just now? Just now earlier before the interview. <laughs> fine. Yeah, so, like, so what is it then? No, because like the, the, okay. Hosono, okay. Maybe the question Hosono, was, Hosono oh, okay. said. I think uh, his credit is produced and performed. By, except for like two tracks, right? So I think okay. I think I it was I framed the question weirdly. So Har, so Haru and Hosono are credited together for performed and arranged. Uh, okay, what okay. is that credit? What, what did they credit themselves as? Oh, oh, I don't know. What did they credit themselves as? Mm -hmm. Is it like an official term or like geniuses? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What did what was it? Miharuomi. Oh, that's pretty tough. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's really cool. Okay, I, got, I, got, I, read, really quick. I read it. I read it wrong, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So we're at one, three, three. The, the questions I have left are YMO questions because I was worried that only you would get the Koshi questions, but you did no. not as good as I thought you would. No, I, I don't know, I'm not, hey, I just wanna say that my grades were really bad in school. So are so mine. I can't, I don't study. That's my fault, mm. I should have studied more. I study for this. Okay, I, you know what I was doing? What? Honestly, I was studying the lyrics. <laughs> that's that's so like more lyrics. important, that's more important. Four hours. Studying. More important. All right. All right, uh, what is the year and the name of Waimo's first album? Uh, YMO 1970. I want to say the US version is 1979 and the Japanese version is 1978. Yes. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. One, four, three. Ooh. <laughs> well. <laughs> the pressure. This thing. Uh, what it's was their first thing. US show? Is it the Greek? Uh, damn it. Who did they open for? Oh, oh. I don't know. I didn't know they opened. Can you give us a hint? Um, what genre? I actually I don't know what they sound like. Oh, I just know the name. Oh. but is it, it is the something. I don't know how else I could like the Beatles. <laughs> 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 what was it? The Tubes. The Tubes. Oh, I never heard of the Tubes. They were at the Greek Theater for two nights opening for The Tubes. Well, it's funny because like, they're like, do we have time for one more? And then they play another song. Like The opener gets an encore. 
Yeah, that's how good they were. That was that's yeah. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, sorry, tubes. Who originally wrote Firecracker? Oh, Martin Denny. Oh, one five oh, three. Damn oh. it! All right. Well, the next question is a three pointer. It's the last question. Oh. Who were the support players at Greek Theater? Oh. Um, what's his name? Uh, Aki Koyano. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. Kenji, the guitar player. Or, uh, uh, and yeah. then, uh, who's the guy doing this? Yeah, yeah. yeah pushing the buttons uh, or whatever. There's three, right? There's three people. There's three people. Okay, so I got one. You got one. Okay, I got one. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you gonna give up to the next person? Uh, Akiko Yano. Mm -hmm. I know what he looks like. I just, I'm afraid I'm gonna mispronounce his name. So it's an E. Right? Uh, now, you know what? I'm just going to say safe. I, I'm going to get one point. One point. You don't want right. to look silly. I don't want to look silly. I don't <laughs> so want to... That, that, that still keeps you one point behind him. Oh, so like I have to guess in order to tie him? I mean, it's one five four right now. <sighs> you, you can, you can. Like, it's not what? Hiroshi Sato. It is not Hiroshi no, Sato. No, no. Damn. Oh, I no. thought it was Hiroshi Sato. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Well, I know he released his own music too and i can think of the album cover but i can't remember the name well you're also missing the guitarist well i don't that that's is this not that's beyond me name not <laughs> beyond my name no it's close but it's not kenji damn there is there Kento. is a there is a great guitarist with the first name kenji oh on Alpha. that's what I, that's what i'm thinking then mm -hmm. okay you know give us a hint uh japan's premier jazz guitarist it's not talking about I know that. Um, is, mm, his record, <laughs> and the gentle thoughts. Uh, is it the yellow? Is it, he, it's, has it's, cover, it, he has an album with a yellow cover. No, that's that's Kenji. Oh, that's Kenji. Yeah, okay. no, he, <laughs> he, he really hung he, up on this. Kenji. He, the, the, the first record ever released on Alpha Records when like they started at the actual record company in '78 oh, yeah. was a record by him. It's called Mermaid Boulevard, <laughs> and it's credited so to oh, him and like... the Gentle Thought. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we, any of us. I don't think any of us know. Watanabe Kazumi. I didn't know oh, that. Really? Yeah, I didn't know that. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, he's like, oh, the, he's got the kind yeah, of, you know, every day. <laughs> almost an afro, like, yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah. Watanabe Kazumi. Yeah. And the, uh, who's the guy plugging stuff in? Matsutake Hideki. That I didn't know. So you lose. Is he Dylan okay. wins. Yeah. Dylan wins. Honestly, I knew that. Yeah, wow, wow. I knew. <laughs> you knew Dylan was going to win? I knew Dylan was going to win. Dylan. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, so is he the same person that was like, the yes, the fourth member that supplied all of the gear. Yes, yeah, the guy mm -hmm. plugged stuff in, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I knew. I just didn't know the name. Yep, he was the one that because like the whole thing was that they were gonna they're gonna have a computer and they're gonna play to it and then that day the computer broke. just fried. Yeah, and then they're like, we just gotta just do it live, right? And that's what it was, right? I have a question. How did he acquire all of those synthesizers? <laughs> yeah, do you know? Where did he get that money? I have no idea. <laughs> I have not looked into that. Is he an I should. Baby? I mean, most of Alpha is, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, like, you know, the fact that, that a lot of the people had the ability to play and learn instruments mm -hmm. at a young age in post-war Japan means they had to be of a certain financial standing, economic standing. Mm -hmm. um, so so they, they, like, had, like, two part-time jobs then, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, congratulations, Dylan. Congratulations, Dylan. Yay! Final questions. <laughs> oh Final questions. Oh. Opinion. Opinion <laughs> questions. Oh, opinion questions. Uh, who are your other favorite alpha artists? Well, we all to, love YMO. To, to, be, to, all to be honest, Sono. yeah. The, I all think the hard part is like, if I had a list to look at, I'd be like that one. That's true. That's right. That's, that's uh, honestly uh, 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 yeah. what you feel right now is how I felt the first time because you're like, what alpha record? And I was like, which ones are alpha? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Anything well, while I'm most touched, which is like everything. Well, I know, like, well, <laughs> yeah, like Takahashi, you know, Hosono, um, Miharu, Minako, Minako, June, Cassiopeia, Cassiopeia, yeah, Cassiopeia, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I feel like oh Maria, also. Mar Maria, yeah, is also great. Garo, uh, I yeah, Garo is really good. I haven't underrated. Heard of Garo. Yeah, um, like folk stuff and yeah. some and then. Um, 
Uh, Kosaka. Kosaka 2. Yeah, is also great. I don't know his name, but there's this one guy on Mushroom Records that's also pretty cool, too. Which the it's album like a, cover It's like, like a gray cover. Uh, 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 I don't know, maybe. Uh, Narita Ken? Maybe. Does he have, like, wait, is he wearing a mushroom shirt? Yeah, 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 yeah. Narita Ken. He's, he's, it's drawn, right? It's, like, illustrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good record. Yeah, that's it is a good record. record. Um, in Toranzi or whatever. Right, 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 yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, a good one. Yeah. yeah. Or uh, Redbirds. Ah, the Redbirds. Redbirds yeah. are great. Um, choir group. Choir group is great. Speaking of, there's Circus. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hi-Fi set. Hi-Fi. And this is I'm just yeah. naming. No, I like mm-hmm. Hi-Fi set. And I, I, I like heard. Hi-Fi set. I like Redbirds a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What are your other influences other than Alpha? We know some of yours. So what are you, what about you guys? Mm. The Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I listen to a lot of, uh, from basically like late 50s to like late 80s Brazilian music. I got just really into yeah, Brazilian. Look, <laughs> look at this. Yeah. Look at this. Do you see this? <laughs> um, a lot of just like samba kind of like starting with like the bossa nova and then like going into like the funk and like groove bass and like Afro Brazilian. Um, like specifically for drumming, it's just like, I think I base a lot of my playing off of like, not my playing, obviously like I play the Ginger Root songs, I play the one Cameron records, but with like, other, like when I'm playing otherwise or some of my fills are based in a lot of like Latin or sort of like South American, uh, rhythms. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. It's hard to say like specifically what I'm influenced by, but. Um, I mean, I grew up listening to a lot of metal music, which like... Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I was a big metal head. And then I completely shifted because I realized that wasn't cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I became like obsessed with like jazz and just like really any kind of complex music was like I felt really engaged with. And like I still think to this day that I still feel that way, but um, I, uh, I'm inspired by like... Yeah, a lot of jazz and like electronic music and um, some classical music, like I don't know, like Steve Reich. But um, yeah, you guys both are like right that in terms of like range. Japanese artists, like uh, Rei Harakami. Um, yeah, it's a good one. Hiroshi Yoshimura, like those, like artists like that have really inspired. Obviously, like Waimo, that's a good one. Like Sakamoto. Sakamoto. Um, yeah, I think in the past maybe. Five or so years, Sakamoto-san has been like a huge influence on me, like trying to relearn how to play piano. I, I started, my first instrument was piano as a little kid, and I definitely had a scary piano teacher. <laughs> um, so um, I quickly decided that learning Green Day songs on guitar was way cooler. Um, and then it just got darker and darker. But, um, yeah. <laughs> but I, I, really, I really love all kinds of music, like... I'm inspired by everything, so, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Anyone that you think people that would enjoy your music should take a listen to as far as contemporary artists? Anyone that you, you recommend from? Uh, hmm. I know last time we talked about Maiwana, which obviously is now, like, I know, she, in the Ginger Root universe. Yeah, yeah contemporary she, artists. She played Fuji Rock with us. Yeah, she did. Play, check her out. Let's just get the Acroface roster. Where's Dan? Yeah, we gotta give Dan's label. You wanna plug, plug anything? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think someone just needs to cover a Jun Togawa song fast because I'm I am hungry. It's for been that. a year and a I'm half hungry for that. since you last said that. I know. And where is it? I was sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I try. I know. I need do some lobbying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So a Jun Togawa song. A Jun Togawa song, I think, That'd would be really great cool. here. I'd love to see someone do something deeper on the catalog, like like Redbirds or Hi-Fi Set. I think that'd be really cool. Um, You're in luck. We have a Redbirds one coming. All right. Great. It actually may come out before this one. Yeah, all right. Great. Well, good job to whoever did it. All yeah. right. <laughs> great. <laughs> nice. Cool. Cool. I think that's kind of... Thank you, guys. <laughs>
Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for having cool. us. Cool. Yeah. yeah. We had a this great time. A and thank you, Tadashi. Experience. Thank you yeah. Guys. Thank. Thank you, Alpha. Thank you, Yen. Thank, thank you, you uh, Thank you, Miharu. Any? Any? Yeah. Oh, did you want to say anything in Japanese to Miharu in case she's watching? Koshi-san, hontoni steki na ongaku tsukute kurete arigatou gozaimasu. Hontoni dai fan desu. Boku tachi wa eto itsumo oan shimasu. Yokatara jikan ga areba. Thanks for watching another episode of My Favorite Alpha. Hope you enjoyed this full episode. We have a lot more video the rest of 2024. So subscribe and see ya.